Cold. It's not a cold, I told you, it's hay fever. Do you want me to? No, no, I'll do it. You never get the glasses right anyway. Don't I? No, you don't. You always get the glasses smeary. Anything particularly one for your tea? Eat out, I thought. Save on washing up. Are you saying there's something wrong with my cooking? No, 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 it's very tasty. I just thought, you know, you, you don't want to be cooking after a hard day on the campaign trail. No, fair enough. Right then. Well, I'll see you tonight. Yeah, have a good day. You too. Oh, dangerous! You couldn't pick something up for us, could you? Thanks. Morning. Lovely day. 20 minutes I've been waiting. It's only a repeat. Well, Mr. Lewis, is it? It is, yes. He hasn't signed. He needs to sign, I'm afraid, to authorize you to collect for him. I'm sorry. <sighs> Would this help? Detective Constable Davis, Wilston North. Ah. So you're the policeman? A policeman, yes. The one who lives with Mr. Lewis? You should have said. I'll fill it for him this time as it's you. But tell him he must sign next time. I will. Thank you. Piles, is it? Hay fever, actually. There we are. Uh, tell him he'd be better off with uh, one of the non-prescription drugs. He's a great believer in the national health, but thanks anyway. Um, uh, maybe you could do something for me in return. In a professional capacity, of course. If I can, sure. It's my next door neighbor. DC Davis, Wilson CID. Yeah? It's about your hedges, Mr. Benson. I don't see what he's getting so worked up over. I mean, what's he grow? Solanum bleeding melongina. You might be happy to look at aubergines all day, but I've got a reputation to think about. All he's asking is if you wouldn't mind bringing them down a bit. Well, why should I? It's not as if he puts up a decent show in front or back. A few tomatoes, a bit of scrappy old lettuce. But then he's a bit short in the green fingers department. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Benson. I think I catch your drift. Yeah, it's an Englishman's home, isn't it? There's no law against it. Well, there is the High Hedges Act. The what? You want to get your priorities straight, mate. There's murderers and rapists running right out there, in case you hadn't heard. You want to catch some of those bastards before coming around here giving me grief. 
You could take a look at him next door for a start off. The girls he has coming in and out, places either a knocking shop or a halfway house for illegals. Are a good mind to write a letter. Oh, yes. Speaking of which, do you recognize this? I haven't got my glasses. What does it say? Go back where you come from, Packy, or else. It was stuffed through Mr. Lowell's letterbox last week, along with about a pound and a half of fresh dog mess. Shameful. Some people. It should be came from, shouldn't it? Go back where you came from. Both the hate mail and the dog shit are serious criminal offences. And if it happens again, I'll come down on the culprit like a hundredweight of the latter. You saying I did it? I'm saying I don't want to have to come back and find out. Just get him cut, all right? Davis. My ranunculars have been commended three years running. This is the point of entry, then. Oh, you'll make DS yet dangerous. <laughs> yeah, nothing fancy. Straight in and out, same as the rest. Alarm? Well, there's the ready rub. Somehow they managed all this without tripping any of the sensors. How many did they get this time? A couple of dozen. Yvonne's got the def gen, uh, ground floor, turn left. Cheers. Morning. DT Davis, Mrs. Hargreaves. Mrs. Hargreaves is the office manager. Hello. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. It's just a shock, you know. I was first in. Security? Cutbacks. We're alarmed, but. How many did they get? No. Well, there's 12 of us in the office. Jean, dear, there's someone in my space. Could you tan away? Did you get a registration? I didn't. But just say it's a nasty green estate in need of a good chamois. Should do the trick. I think you'll find it's mine. The car. Uh, Councillor Balsam, this is Detective Constable Davis and PC Campbell. You've had a break in, I'm afraid, after your computers. It's a spate, apparently. They seem to be targeting local government offices. Is it political? Political? No, no. Well, I'm... you know, next week we've got the election. Yes, yes, I know, but I think it's more tapping into a ready supply. In the past two weeks, they've done a couple of schools in the benefit office. I see. Well, you better part where you like. And if I can be of any help, I'll be in my office if anyone wants me, Jean. Thank you. I've got a couple of informants to check up on, but it's a professional operation. Take the high-end machines, leave the drawers. Right, well, let's have a result soon as on this one, shall we? Only the chief super's got his monthly prayer meeting down at the town hall next week, and I do not want him coming down here with tales of civic woe. Sure. Oh, can I put you down for a spot of uh, overtime this weekend, double bubble? Only uh, young Pimlot's on a promise, apparently. Uh, not me, Gav, not this weekend. I've got plans. Plans? You? Yeah, me. Just this afternoon to get through, then four days of uninterrupted bugger all. Huh. Nothing, nothing. Could have sworn I heard God laughing. That's all. Man. If I am, it'll be a first. Ooh! Look what the cat's brought up. Whoa, hello, darling. Good house? Yeah. Spanking Ramoni these days. I'll put you down to Eric. Since I got rid of the feather boa and I went for the real thing, business has been booming. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> so, what can I do you for? Pick your brains, man. Just my luck. Everybody else just wants me for my body, and the one half decent bloke I know only wants me for my mind. Well, you're gonna have to help me with my stuff. Our regular road is off with flu, and I've got a bit of the flag for the half past two spot. Computers? No, they're not really my thing, dangerous. No, sure, but you can keep your ears open for me. Anyone knocking out PCs on the cheap? Well, what's in it for me? My undying gratitude. Oh, well, that's gonna keep me warm at night. I'll see what's in the funds. Nah, you're all right. You can have this one on the house. You've done all right by me once. I don't forget a favour. God, that wife of yours was a bloody fool to let you go. Do you still see her? 
A bit, yeah. Running out to the airport first thing in the morning, as it happens. April in Paris. It's gonna be. Mm. Mm. Oh. That's the problem with some women dangerous. They don't know when they're onto a good thing. You'll keep an ear out then. Yeah, sure. What's the mouse called? Lunch. Davis. Look at it, Mr. Davis. Ruined. Everything gone. It was like this when you got back for lunch. Did you speak to him? This morning. So are you going to arrest him or what? Be the devil to prove, Mr. Lell. But you know it's him. I strongly suspect it's him. Making it stick is... Hang on a minute. What is it? What's wrong? So what's he like then, this bloke? He seems nice enough. He's a chemist. Chemist? Yeah. How long has he been here? Twenty odd years. Married? His wife went back to India a few years ago, apparently. Oh, really? Got a dress for her, have you? I see young women going in and out, according to the bloke next door. I wouldn't put too much faith in him, Gov. There's no love lost. Well, that's as may be, but the long and the short of it is, his bit of creative vandalism's turned up the body. A skeleton? There's no saying how long it's been there. Well, we know soon enough, won't we? What's the ETA on the pathologist? He's been notified, an hour, something like that. Right, dangerous. So I want you to go back to the station and make like Bogest. Hold the fault. No, 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 no. I'm on leave as of 5.30. You were, you mean. All leave is cancelled as of now. God knows how long we're going to be tied up here. Yeah. Would you have me leave the good burgers of Wilsdon unpoliced? Well, then. Now is the time for all good men, or failing that, you? Well, this is one for MIT, isn't it? What? Did that bunch of goal hangers steal all the glory? Bollocks. We shall be here on hand should the need, etc., etc. Boss, Sucker wants you to take a look at something. I think we might have another one. Another what? Another body. You're joking. No, I'm not. Bloody hell, could be a career maker, this one. No, what about my career? <laughs> a bit late in the day, isn't it? Thanks for this. It's all right. So, what are you doing then? Feet up? Uh, no, actually. That was the idea. But as it turns out, I've got to work. Everything going all right at Mods? Yeah, well, I'm not there much. You're nasty. Ask you what? What I'm going with. Oh. Well, it's not for me to ask, is it? Well, it's not a bloke, if you're wondering. I wasn't. Do you remember Trisha? Not especially. Bridesmaid? Ah. It's her. Right. She's having trouble with Brian. Is she? She thinks he's seeing someone. Mm-hmm. Are you really not interested? Hearing about the death throes of someone else's marriage, funnily enough. Morning. Morning. Last call for the Murray Celeste. Still out there, are they? Well, you've not been watching yet, Tally, have you? Another one turned up last night. That's three now. Regular house of horrors you've uncovered. If anyone wants me, I'm in the canteen. Hey, hey, not so fast. Yvonne's out chasing down Napsconda from the scrubs. Another council office has broken into one for you, I believe. Right. And transport boys want a word. Sorry, Squire, but this is a restricted area. I understand you got one under. Under, over, sideways, up in the tree, all over the bleeding shop. You'll need a tetanus for that. A bit early, I know, but I wondered if you had any Miss Purrs might fit the bill. No ID, see. I can have a shift, dude. What are we looking at, man? Woman? A bloke, we think. There's a blood stain, size five, any loafer up the tracks of ways, for these days. <laughs> It's 2050, Basingstoke, Norwich. Fast train, see? Body explodes on impact. By the time what's left's gone through the wheels, well, you can imagine. Yeah, thanks. 
Peach. There's no bus pass amongst the bits and jams, so your guess is as good as. No point in asking about height, I suppose. Selfish bloody sods. Nobody ever thinks of the poor old driver, do they? If you're gonna do it, do it nice and quietly at home with a few pills and a bottle of decent malt. Don't ruin everyone else's day. John? John? Any word on that hose? Back, all right. It's in a bit. All right, boy. Good done. Okay. That's it. One on the way. Oh, I fancy this. Yeah. Well, we'll do that. Then we'll get the top on Golden Spoon. Morning. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Right, Beautiful day, isn't it? Modelers. Can't you read, mate? I'll be buying from Mr. Haynes. He's a bad man. I mean, he's a bad man. Give me that. Who called it in? Key holder. The alarm went off just gone to this morning. We had a car on scene five minutes after. They said they can get anything this time. They're getting sloppy. Yeah, well, now you're here, I suppose I'd better get on. They show up Shkonda from the scrubs? Yeah. Any luck? I dropped by his accommodation, but there's no reply. When did you back? This morning. It's a bit soon to assume he's done a runner, isn't it? Life are on home release. I don't suppose they're taking any chances. No, I suppose not. Fancy grabbing a bite at lunch? Hmm? It's a date. Transport boy sent over. It's from the one under. Right, thanks. Oh, and there's a local character in the cells you might want to take a look at. How do? There we are. One bag of uh, pamphlets. Fifteen pounds, ninety-seven pence, in coins. Don't fall in the canal, will you? I won't, no. Now, you are being let off the caution, Mr Lewis. Do you understand? He does, believe me. Thank you very much, it's very good of you. Yes, it is. We won't be so lenient next time. Right you are. Ha have a good Friday. <laughs> what were you thinking of? You don't just go waltzing into a major crime scene and start a punch-up. I didn't start it. We had a difference of political opinion which ended in violent confrontation. Besides, I didn't know it was a major crime scene, did I? Nobody said anything. What about the police cars in uniforms? Weren't they a bit of a giveaway? I thought they were doing it for the telly, didn't I? They filmed the knicker of Harles and they're always around here in their willy wagons and honey bagels. Five tea, six coffees, and a tango, please. Davis. So, I'll nip into the yard between sets for a quick breath of fresh nicotine, you know, minding my own amongst the empty crates, and this little van trundles up. This is at the Black Dog? Yeah. Landlord pops out. Bloke opens the back of the van and Bob's your mother's fancy van. Computers. Mm. Ram packed. Get the registration. Oh, sorry. It was too dark. It was a little van though. Yeah, and it had some letters on the on the back doors. SC, I think it said. Yeah, yeah, big letters. Right, well, I think it's time I had a quiet word with this landlord of yours. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's all right. Listen, you couldn't do something for me, could you? Well, I'll do my best. I've got this friend, and I arranged to meet him last night, and he never showed up. That's a regular friend. I haven't seen him every Thursday for the last few months. Well, maybe he just got tied up. No, uh, made it called. Go on, then. Go on, name for him. John. <laughs> What's he like, this John, uh, appearance-wise? Well, he's in his 50s. Quite tall. Not a lot of hair. He's got really pale skin, though. Yeah, pale. Like, like a statue or marble. How'd you meet? At one of my shows. 
Said I reminded him of his wife. It's funny that. You'd have thought they want the opposite. A lot of them are widows or something. I don't know. Maybe they want to get something back. Maybe. How was he in the teeth department? Well, starting to think you stood me up. This absconder of yours. What about him? I think I might have something. Mandy's bloke's got an upper set of dentures. She also said he's very pale, skin like alabaster. Prison term. You said he was a lifer. Now, he always meets her on Thursdays. Your absconder's on home release, right? What day? Well, it's due about this morning, so yeah, Thursdays, I guess. Right, see, if Mandy's John can't make it, he rings her, lets her know. Last night, he doesn't show. No call, no nothing. This morning, you've got an absconder. Transport police have got one under. You think it's him? Well, no, soon enough. What's his name? Harvey Clemens! thrown the plans of thousands of travellers hoping to get away to France for the bank holiday weekend into chaos. Yvonne? It's for us. If you're reading this, then I went through with it. I'm sorry for whoever had to find me. The truth is, I couldn't hack it on the outside. Too much has changed. Goodbye, Alfie. You called. I need you to dot an I for me, Ron. A bloke called Alfie Clements killed himself on the track near the junction last night. If you could have the dust of that sign, I'd be grateful. And that's going to tell us what, exactly? Well, it's a bit treacherous just when you go through the fence there. When I went down this morning, I put my hand out to stop myself going arse over and... Uh... You reckon this Clemens fella's done the same thing, hmm? Assuming he's as clumsy as you, eh? Got a set of dabs for him, have you? We have, as it happens. Known offender. Lifer, in fact. On home release, due back at the scrubs this morning. Oh, fair dues. Take a while, though, even if he is there. Tomorrow's probably as soon as I can manage. It's all right. There's plenty to be going on with, believe me. Computers? Yeah. No, no, sorry, mate. Keep my ears open for you, of course. But no one's been in offering any. No, 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 no. I, I run a pretty tight ship as far as that's concerned. Good. Well, that's some relief. How's that then? Hmm? Relief. What way? Oh, they're a fire hazard. Eastern block components. Something to do with a heat sink, apparently. Pity any poor bugger who bought one. How much you pay for it? Two hundred. How much shit am I in? How much do you want? Look, I don't know who he was. My boy's been at me to get one for him, see? Homework, isn't it? And his birthday's coming up, so I thought, you know, big one, three, teenager, I'd push the boat out. Right. So I mentioned it to a couple of the regulars on Monday. Anyway, last night, this young lad comes by. Little van, very nice. Suit clean-shaped. Heard you're in the market for a PC, he said. So I thought he must have been through one of the boys. Ex-council stock, you said it was. Ex-council? Yeah, you know, that they were upgrading and so on. Well, I'll put it this way, they are now. Oh. Yeah, right. Anyway, 200 quid, he said. So I thought somebody up there must like me. Thank you very much. Of course, I, uh, I wouldn't have had it if I'd known it was Ben. Oh. Don't suppose he left a number with you? No. Oh, no. Sorry, no. Olive, did he give the upstairs a go, love? Ron's been on about it. Hello, Davis. Oh, hello, where are you? I'm sorry. I couldn't get a cab for love nor money. And I really couldn't face the tube, not after spending a day jammed up against sweaty, frustrated holiday makers. That's right, I don't mind. I do. Bloody air traffic. So much for a weekend in Paris. So much for my weekend, full stop. Nobody about? Of course not, it's Easter. Pete and Christie? Away. Man Jane? Putting a pond in. Lisa and Justin? It's all couples doing coupley things. Families. That was the whole point of going away with Trisha. Now I'm Billy No Mates. Don't suppose you fancy Sunday lunch, do you? I think Maud's cooking something. You could come if you want. I don't mind. I just don't want to spend all bank holiday on my own.
You're certain it's Clemens? Certain as we can be. We'll run a DNA to confirm, but Cena Klein found a set of prints that put him by the track. I wish I could say I was surprised. Unfortunately, the suicide rate for ex-offenders is, I regret to say, uncomfortably high. We do what we can, counselling and so forth, but uh, for some, the shock to the system proves too great. Uh, and, of course, Clemens had an additional cross to bear. He was dying. Uh, lung cancer, inoperable. Secondaries in the liver, the gullet. Basically what those in the medical profession call riddled with it. How long had he gone? Six months if he was lucky. Longer if he was unlucky. It's mostly why he was being paroled. How do you take that? On the chin, according to Dr Thornley, he was a tough old bird. He'd not shown any sign that he might... Not that I'm aware. I've only been here six months myself, but uh, by all accounts, he was a model prisoner. Wish we had more like him. Uh, well, not literally, obviously, but uh, as far as I know, he kept himself out of trouble, uh, helped to run the library, did his bit in the garden. Do you have an extra kin for him? We have a telephone number for a brother, but there doesn't appear to have been any contact for some years. Certainly no visits, which is sad. They were both brought up in care, I understand. Look, I've uh, had his cellmate, McWatt, lay out his personal effects. I thought you might want to see them. This all of it. I've had his snout, but the rest of it's there. He'd have wanted me to have it. How long had you known him? We had about a time in Maidstone together, about ten years ago. Then we up in here six years back. How did he seem when he went out? Same as normal. He never showed much. Did he have any plans when he was released? Plans? Oh, aye, aye, um, he planned to go and die of cancer. I'm oh, sorry, but I liked him. He deserved better. As well as I knew, he was going to go and find somewhere quiet, on the coast, live out what he had left. Did he ever mention his brother? Billy? Not much. I saw him a couple of times when he first went down, I think, but Billy was in the army anyway. He moved around a lot. Hong Kong, Ireland. So plans? Nah. Talked about his kid once in a while. I don't suppose there was much chance of a happy reunion there. How's that? Taken away. Same as Alfie. But no, Alfie wasn't one for showing his feelings. They say he can't beat the system. That's one way. Don't let on when you're happy. Don't let on when you're sad. Just keep it inside. Didn't have him down to top himself, though. But hey, you can't tell in here. Never judge a book. Nope. Unless you're Alfie, of course. He had to. Oi, I'll need a receipt to say you've done it. Yeah, right. Morning, Mr. Benson. What are you doing here? Eh? Want to see how the other half's going? What's with the lumberjack? Forensics think we might be on for a couple more in under the hedges. How many is that now? Five. Two more tipped up this morning by the potting shed. My one in the vegetable patch was just the tip of the iceberg then. Looks that way. What about Mr. Lau? MIT's taking him up west for questioning. Still sticking to his story about the missus chipped off back to India. Did he give you an address? We're looking into it. We're more worried about the young women he's had going in and out. Schoolgirls, a couple of neighbours described him as. He's denying it point blank, naturally. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? I suppose you would, yeah. Asian, are they, these girls? Mostly. Why? Nothing. Just curious. So, what are you doing here, anyway? I'm looking for the governor. You about? Alfie Clements, Alfie Clements. Yes, uh, yes, yes, Alfie Clements. Strike me, that is going back a bit dangerous. I wasn't long out of hand when Alfie Clements made the papers. Uh, wife killer, right? Yes, sir. So what's this all about then? Night before last, he went under the Basingstoke to Norwich Express. Voluntary? So I'm trying to find out. Well, didn't he leave a note? He did, yeah. Well, there you go then. If there's only one problem with that, Alfie Clemens couldn't read or write online. He was dyslexic. Oh, so what does this note say then? By the time you read this, I'll be deaf. Something like that. If he didn't write it, I've had a move to the old case files, but just wondered if you had any ideas. Sounds like detective work to me. 
You sure you got the right bloke? I think I have, yeah. Yeah, Carol, her name was. Wife and stray like Alfie. Oh, my God. What's her looker? Case paper said you found her. Yeah, yeah, I did. That's funny. Um, she was my first. I'd had suddens before, but nothing like that. Neighbour called it in, complaining about a screaming kid. Sure enough, there she was in the living room, Carol. Kitty in the cot, screaming its lungs out. She'd been ironing. That's what he did her with, the iron. Heat of the moment, as it were. He never admitted it, Alfie. Well, I mean, if every murderer put their hands up when asked nicely, the course would be out of business. I don't think he could face up to what he'd done, or more likely, what she'd done. She'd been carrying on, fancy man. The post-mortem turned up she'd been pregnant. Don't take a great deal of imagination to follow that one through. Who was he, this other bloke? Uh, dentist. He was uh, Baldwin, Maudsley, uh, Moorcroft. That's, that's right. Moorcroft. He was a right flash, Harry. Golf club, tie, blazer, Rotarians. Alfie tried to finger him for uh, Carol, if I remember right. Moorcroft. Yeah, we looked into him, but he was Sally by up the yin yang. His wife, his next door neighbour, so on, had him at home. In the end, the jury wasn't out an hour. Alfie went down with a recommendation for a full stretch, and the county showed no remorse. End of story. Not quite, though, is it, Gov? Can you think of anyone who might have had it in for him? Her family? She didn't have a family, I told you. Brought up in the parish, probably how they met. No, I doubt if anyone would even remember Alfie, let alone bear a grudge. There's still the suicide note. He probably got someone in the nick to write it for him. Sign off on it, dangerous. Whether he topped himself or fell foul of some junky mugger out for some loose change, nobody gives a tinkers. It was a murderer. You don't mean that, Carl. Even a murderer deserves justice. Well, some might say that's exactly what he got. Cheers. Oh, good afternoon. It's Detective Constable Davis calling from Wilsdon North. Can I speak to Mr. William Clemens, please? I see. How long ago was that? Uh-huh. I don't suppose he left any forward. No. OK. Well, thanks for your time. No jewelry. I put a call into the MOD to see if they've any last known for him, but I wouldn't hold out too much hope. Not much to show for life, is it? Come into the world with nothing and go out with what? A tin of throat sweets, half a set of dentures, a toothbrush, a key, a radio, a travel chess set and a, a ticket for something at the town hall. So that's that. Suicide. Would you be happy with that if you were the coroner? Well, there's a good by a cruel world, which Alfie plainly couldn't have written. Open verdict, then, most likely. I don't like open verdicts. You think somebody did for him? I think I want to know why a man who was planning on killing himself bought a ticket to this WWF show, or whatever it is, tonight at the town hall. Can I help you? I'm looking for Mr. and Mrs. Moorcroft. From the papers? No, no, no. I'm, uh, D.C. Davis. Ah. The Clemens business, is it? Dennis and Marjorie moved in the same year as us. I suppose we were neighbours for... Well, that's part of ten years before all the trouble started. What were they like? Very nice couple. Professional. Marjorie taught at uh, Grove Lane Primary. Both played bridge. <laughs> Dennis was tremendous fun at parties. Of course, he always had an eye. Flirted with all the other men's wives, but, well, that was just Dennis, and one took it all in good part. <laughs> I mean, that was just as far as it went. A bit of joshing. Until Carol Clemens. Yes. There may have been others, I couldn't say. But Marjorie certainly had no inkling until it all came out, poor thing. 
What's your interest in all this now, if you don't mind me asking? Alfie Clemens, Carol's husband. It looks as if he killed himself. Well, I'm sorry, but good riddance to bad rubbish. You know, he had the cheek to try and pin it on poor Dennis. Yes, so I understand. Well, we soon scotched that nonsense. Both Marjorie and I were able to vouch for him. On the evening he was supposed to have done it, I was painting this room. Dennis was out in the garden giving the lawn a stripe. In plain view, whole time. That's where a spanner in the works, I can tell you. When did they move? Uh, Dennis moved first, as soon as all the fuss from the trial was over. He didn't move far. Of course, he couldn't, not with his practice. Marjorie went not long after. They divorced, then? I don't know if they divorced. Just went their separate ways. Perhaps if they'd been children, it might have survived. Such a shame. Nice, decent couple broken up by, well, nothing people like that. You wouldn't have an address or telephone number for either of them? No, no, I'm afraid not. Dennis is probably in the book if he's still practicing. Marjorie. Well, of course, you know who she is. I never made a secret of it, Mr. Davis. But I didn't shout it from the rooftops, either. <laughs> I didn't go back to my maiden name because I was trying to hide anything. It just seemed to make sense. When Dennis and I broke up, I made a new life for myself. Old name, new life. Just not something I want to dwell on. I appreciate that. I just I mean, wonder... I haven't seen Dennis in 25 years. Why would you want to dig all this up now? Alfie Clemens went under a train just outside Wilson Junction two nights ago. Well, what's that got to do with me? Or Dennis come to that? Well, there'll be an inquest. I'm just looking into the circumstances surrounding his death. That's us, is it? We're circumstances. I'm sorry to stir up painful memories, Councillor, but I'm afraid you're all I've got to go on. It was over 28 years ago, Mr. Davis. As far as I'm concerned, it was all done and over with then. But you stuck by him. He was my husband. Of course I stood by him. But you still separated. What was that? I don't know. I wanted to make it work. I tried. But Dennis was never very strong. Oh, good fun, yes. But underneath? Nothing very much in the way of character. When the trial was done, he started drinking. Not just... I mean, really drinking. I think that was harder to take than anything that had gone before. Perhaps it would have fallen apart, with or without what happened. One day I came home from school and he was gone. Moved into the little flat above the practice. So there you are. All my dirty linen. Sorry. No, you're not. You're just doing your job. And this is your stop. Mr. Moorcroft? Who is it? Detective Constable Davis, Mr. Moorcroft, Wilston CID. I wondered if I might have a word. What about? Alfie Clemens. Mr. Moorcroft. I've got nothing to say. I, I wondered if you'd just come to the door. I told you I've got nothing to say about him. I'm ill. Go away. Of course, a lot of these names were originally patronymic, you know, like the Irish show of the Scots, Mac. Mm. Take a name like Price. That would have originally have been 
Ap Reis, right? Ap, as in son of, and Reis. Well, Reis, as in son of Reis. Right. Of course, the English in their infant couldn't be arsed with all that, so they just contracted to P. Reese and eventually Price. Fancy. Here, is that barbed wire around the ring? Okay, with them. Poor old Alfie. Trying, eh? That's too bad. When were you last in touch with him? Not since he went inside. That's the way he wanted it. I had one meet with him after he went down. Told me not to come back. Get on with your life, he said. Forget me. You've no idea why he'd have had a ticket for tonight, then? I don't know. Coincidence? Maybe you'd heard I was involved in this now. There's magazines on there. I run about 20 fighters. Maybe you'd seen my name in one of them. I don't know. Is there anyone you can think of who might have had a grudge against no. him? No. Not unless it was something that happened on the inside. He never hurt a soul on the outside. That's just the way he was. He got himself a job at the milk depot. Got me set up with the army. Then he met Carol. Worship the water she walked on, Alfie did. They got married, little place together on a council. Frankie was born. They even took me in and all while I was waiting on the army. <laughs> One big happy family. So what went wrong? I don't know. I was away in Belfast when it all started. Alfie lost his job on the milk. Money was tight. Moorcroft turned Carol's head. Who knows what goes on in a marriage? Do you think he killed her? Doesn't matter what I think, Mr. Davis. Twelve good men and true said he did. What well, good's poking around now gonna do him? Rest in peace, eh? Look, there's some of his things, personal effects. You know, I'm sure he'd want you to have them. Just stick your name and address down in there and I'll get them sent on after the inquest. What happened to Frankie? Taken away. I wanted to adopt, but uh, the army's not much of a life for a kid. So. Probably for the best. Anyway, got to get on. Thanks for letting me know. You know where to reach me now if there's anything else. Eggy, 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 oi, oi, oi! Do you think I should tell him he's found them all? No, he's enjoying himself. <laughs> Do you think if we'd had kids? I'll just see how the joint's doing. Right. Right. I suspect it was Mrs. Peacock in the billiard room with the rope. Nope. Thanks very much, Julia. It was a lovely spread. You must come round to ours next time. You're welcome. Do you want to wait for me in the car? Huh? Oh, right. Right you are. Thanks. It was nice. I know it's probably a poor consolation for Paris, but... No. Thanks for coming. So, what are you doing tomorrow? I don't know. Depends on the weather, really. I'm 
I've got some paperwork to catch up on. You? Oh, back to work. Yeah, God, what's all this in Lazarus Lane? Half a dozen bodies or something, they're saying. Yeah, yeah. But you're not... Uh, no. Premier League stuff. I'm... I'm still scratching around in the third. Hmm. Well, I'll, um... Yeah. Yeah, do. I don't think it would have... made any difference if we'd... No. No, I just... No. Probably not. Right, you put the fire on, I'll fill the cat. We'll have a nice cup of tea. Where are the matches? Get light off the stove. With what? Bit of scrap. What scrap? Bit of paper, anything. Here. God almighty, do I have to do everything for you? That was all right in the end, I thought. Dangerous. Dangerous? Where'd you get this? From one of the cleaners after wrestling. Thought I might give it a go. Did you get the registration? Sorry, it's too dark. It was a little van, though. Had some letters on the side. SC, I think it said. Yeah, big letters. It's my daughter, C, Clive's mum. She's on the waiting list for her back. 18 months, they said. NHS don't count it as an emergency. I said, you try telling that to my Sue when she's been up all night crying with pain. You're wasting your breath. Anyway, we didn't know what to do. And then this lady I cleaned for, she had the same thing. Now, she was diagnosed after my Sue, but she went private, so she got seen straight away. And I thought, well... If it's only money... Let me get this straight, Olive. Because you're cleaners, you have the alarm codes for where you're cleaning. So then you what? Trot along at the dead of night, turn the alarms off, load Clive here up with the computers, mess the place up a bit so it looks good, then turn the alarms back on. Well, I wouldn't want anybody nicking stuff. So what went wrong at the permanency centre? The where? The permanency centre, Langbridge Road, Thursday night. They changed the alarm codes, what? That wasn't us. You sure? Yeah. It's not on my router. I wouldn't have the alarm codes. Look, it's not Clive's fault. He's only doing what I told him. Will we go to prison? Make a full statement to Yvonne, exactly what you told us. And I'll put in a word for you at the trial. I can't promise anything, but you're not exactly the great train robbers, are you? C. Davis. That's right. Jenny Burden, senior permanency officer. Sorry to drag you in on a bank holiday. Oh, that's all right. There's always one of us on call. Runaways, or believe me, won't be the first of our kids to fall foul of the law. So, go on. Who is it? Danny Jones starting fires again. No, no, nothing like that. You had a break in Thursday night. Yes, I heard. It's about that, is it? Sort of. As you can imagine, what's contained here is very sensitive material. However, most agencies have procedures in place to allow for contact either by letterbox or direct. Each case is judged on its merits, but I think, as you've described it, that wouldn't have been supported in this situation for obvious reasons. Sure. 75, you said? 75, 76, that neck of the woods. How easy would it be for someone to find this if they didn't know where to look? 
Well, it's alphabetical and sorted in years, so I mean, if you can read a telephone directory, I'm sure even a policeman could manage it. What is all this bad blood between coppers and social workers? I've never quite got it, you know, we're both underpaid, both overworked, both undervalued. Hmm. Before a successful place in 77, there was one approach made for permanency in 76, but it was turned down. And I'm not surprised. God. That definitely wouldn't have been appropriate. This is from a family member. See for yourself. Mr. Moorcroft. Mr. Moorcroft! There's a blood stain, size five penny loafer down the tracks of ways. It's great to see them enjoying themselves, isn't it? It is, yeah. They're yours, aren't they? Grandchildren. They won't be coming across after the ride, will they? You won't be buying them toffee apples, candy floss, slipping them sixpence for the tombola. Games aren't healthy. Sorry. We spoke yesterday. I don't think so. Yeah, we did. Only then you were pretending to be Dennis Moorcroft. I've been back to the house. You're the copper. I'm the copper. Yeah. Billy about. Leave him out of it. I can't, Elfie. You got him into it. He was going to write your suicide note. The least you should have done is to get him to change his handwriting. It was Billy who broke into the permanency centre as well, wasn't it? Well, it would have to have been him being the only one of the two of you who could read. <laughs> Swapping your clothes with Dennis Moorcroft was a nice idea. Key to your flat in his pocket and everything. But you would never have got into his shoes, would you? <laughs> 
If you just slipped away quietly, I'm sure no one would have broken a sweat to track you down. Busted flush old con with six months left on the clock. But murder's murder, Alfie. Whether you believe Dennis Warcroft killed Carol or not, revenge is no defense. So you see, I can't leave Billy out of it. He's an accessory. Oh, you're right, I wanted Dennis Moorcroft dead. 30 years for something I didn't do. He killed my wife. I lost my little Frankie. And everything else. He completely destroyed my life. I went to his house. Broke in through the back. Coming! I said to him, Do you know who I am? Yes. I know who you are. It was weird. Almost like he was expecting me. Relieved, even. I thought he'd argue, plead with me, beg me not to do it. But no, nothing. I hadn't thought about hurting and killing that man for nearly 30 years. And finally I had him. And I couldn't do it. I wasn't a killer then and I'm not now. That's when he lost it. What are you waiting for? Do it, please. Just do it. I won't stop you. I won't scream. Please. I can't take it anymore. Just make it stop! What are you doing? Get off the track, you prick! It wasn't me! Why'd he do that? Why'd he say he'd not kill Carol and then do that? I was gonna let him go. Guilt. 30 years of carrying around the knowledge he'd helped send an innocent man to prison. But he conspired to prevent the real killer being brought to justice. You had it right, Alfie. Only you picked the wrong Moorcroft. The organizers have asked me to thank you all for making today's fair such a fabulous success. Do enjoy the rest of the day, and I hope to see you all again here next year. Thank you. You're a little late for the judging, Mr. Davis. Better late than never. What can I do for you? The night of Carol Clemens' murder. Not again. You're like a dog with a bone, Mr. Davies. Wouldn't your time be better spent out looking for our computers? Walter Parrish was able to vouch for your husband that evening, yes? Yes, and so was I, and we've been over this already. I know, but what I want to know now is who was it vouched for you? Excuse me? Who was able to vouch for you? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. It was Dennis who needed the alibi, and Walter and I were able to provide him with one. Clemens accused Dennis. Alfie Clemens got it wrong. He knew he hadn't killed Carol, but he was so eaten up with hatred for your husband, he forgot someone else had also been her. You see, Walter Parrish never mentioned seeing you, either then or when I spoke to him the other day. He saw Dennis, but not you. What does that prove? Proves the only person who can say where you were at the time of Carol Clemens' murder was your husband. Two people standing alibi for each other. We tend to view that as conspiracy. <laughs> well, sure, I admit, by itself, perhaps it's not that much, but when you also take into consideration that you later approached social services with a view to adopting Carol Clemens' daughter, it's what we call circumstantial evidence. I... 
it was because of Dennis. I felt in some way responsible for... I'm sure you did. Tell me, Councillor, were you fingerprinted at the time? I'm sure your husband had his taken to check against the murder weapon, but I don't suppose yours were. See, any prints found on the iron used to kill Carol Clemens will still be on record. I was home all evening. Talk to Dennis, he'll tell you. I would if I could, believe me, Councillor, but I'm afraid he's dead. He killed himself. It was your husband, not Alfie Clemens, who went under the train on Thursday night. <laughs> Are you open again now? Not yet, no. Oh, should we try the ghost train, then? <laughs> yeah. They never seem to have any difficulty falling pregnant to girls like that, do they? There's probably more like her leaving here today with one on the way. Some people have it so easy. Well, it's never the right people, is it? What was it hurt the most, Councillor? That Dennis got her pregnant? Or that she was common? What was it hurt? What do people call it? Trying for a baby? We're trying for a baby, they say. What they mean is that they've stopped taking precautions and are going at it from dawn till dusk, trying. Well, we tried. We had years of it, trying and hoping. Love by the calendar, the clock, the thermometer. Holding it in afterwards, flit over your head, backside to the ceiling. Hmm. And then the disappointment. A monthly pat on the hand with, next time, eh, love? It wasn't as if it was me. It was Dennis. Dennis had the problem. A low count I wanted more than anything. I was with children. All day, miss, miss. I could have... I put Dennis first. I put the marriage first. I loved him. Dennis the Jaffa could only fire blanks. And then he went and did that with her. It wasn't. She already had a child. It should have been me. It was my child she took. It was mine. I'll do my own hair, thank you. Ah, dangerous, just the man. Aspinall wants a word with you. What is it? Lazarus Lane. It's been a development. Don't say a word. I couldn't. What happened? What happened? Well, would you believe it? It turns out that what you unwittingly stumbled on in Lazarus Lane was not the killing field of a deranged chemist serial killer, but in actual fact, what epidemiologists refer to as a common, or in this case, very much garden, plague pit. That's what happened. Plague pit? Yeah, you know, a big communal hole in the ground where they put the nameless victims of the Black Death. Oh, plague pit, right. Yeah, it looks that way, at least. They're not sure whether it's bubonic, which won't have survived, or smallpox, which will. Hence, we're banged up here under observation for the foreseeable. That is a bit of bad luck. You're enjoying this? No. I wouldn't say enjoying. Well, don't push it. Have you any idea how long it's going to take you to work off landing me in here? You can't blame me. The prospect of three weeks plus without a pint, I could blame who I like. If there was any justice, you'd be in here as well. Me? Anyone who came into contact with the soil. Ah, well, no, I didn't, you see. Had a quick shifty, gloved up at all times. 
Oh, I can't prove different, of course. No. It's a bugger, then. Yeah, well, just be careful what you wish for. Afternoon, Mr. Benson. Ah, oh, Mr. Davis. Just trying to get the place ship shape for opening tomorrow. What can I do for you? Well, I just thought I'd look in, see how you were doing. Oh, that's very kind of you. Well, I'm unharmed by my adventures, as you can see. I'm very glad to hear it. See, I had an uncle who was a chemist, and I've always had a bit of a soft spot. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. At a place not unlike this one. Yeah. Old-fashioned, the old coloured bottles, not like those big chain store places. Matter of fact, I used to help them out in the holidays before I joined the force. Oh, yeah? Is that right? I expect you get to hear all sorts in here. If you're anything like my uncle, you do anyway. It's funny. People are almost more at home talking to a chemist than their own doctor. People's most intimate secrets. It's a bit like being a priest, really. I suppose we hear all, see you all, and don't judge any. Your uncle, is he still uh, dispensing? No, no, no. He was. He struck off. He got caught supplying contraceptives to underage girls. Was he? Those who were too scared or embarrassed to go to their doctor, you know, maybe they didn't want their parents to find out. I think the authorities were all right with the condoms, but it was the pill that did for him. Two years suspended. Two, two years? Mm. You're quite sure you're all right? Uh, perhaps I am a little more tired than I first thought. Be nice to get back to the working week, I expect. Can take it out of you, these long bank holidays. Be seeing you. I've been weighing it all up, you know. Have you? Yes, I have. I think on balance, I'm not really cut out for public life. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You'd have had my vote. Really? Cheers, mate. Still, easy come, easy go. Yeah. I've been meaning to ask, what you get if you set fire to Hugh Hefner's mansion? Hot cross bunnies. Oh, you've heard it? Not in the last 12 months. OK. Who is the Easter Bunny's favourite actor? Hey? Hey? Go on. Robert De Niro. <laughs> All right, what do you call ten rabbits marching backwards? I don't know. Proceeding hairline. It's not strictly accurate, is it? The hair isn't a rabbit. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense after a pint. That time already. It comes around, doesn't it? Well, I do have his brain in a jar here, so I presume he's dead. Or he could be a detective constable working in North London. What we do here is try and invent new drugs, which will one day make us all get very rich. John, we haven't spoken to her since she told us about poor Henry. Not to worry, I'm sure she'll turn up. It's time me dangerous. You're beginning to sound like a detective. 